uh, confirm was here. Is Alan, Alan Sorensen is on? Julie Richmond? Yes. Rob Parrington? Yes, sir. Okay. Ashley Lauren Burns? I'm here. Nicole Farmer? I believe that's heard. Okay. Is Sandra J Jobson here? I'm here. Oh, great. Okay, good. Uh, Jack Farr, I see him. Uh, yes, here. Jason Morris? Here. Okay. Uh, Jacob Tewill, I see. Um, is Gary Spears on? Yes, I'm on, Harry. Okay, great. Scott Manley? Brian Marr? Mike Sweden, I think I saw. Here. Uh, John Ravella? Al Fusco, I know, is there. Um, Olu Flor Florin from MTA. I'm here. And the mayor, Mayor DiStefano, is on also? Yes, yes, he is. Okay, and Ken Worsted. Present. Okay, and Ken, Ken, what organization do you represent? Uh, I'm in, I'm with Creighton Manning Engineering. Uh, I'm standing in for Frank Felicuto, who couldn't make it today. Okay, great, thank you, welcome. Thank you. Um, Glenn Godali. Okay, is there anybody else that I missed? Is uh, Katie, WSPS? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Katie Craig, uh, WSP, on behalf of the city of Middletown as well. Okay. And anybody else? Katie's the last one. I think we have some folks from local projects unit on as well, Harry. Okay. All right. Well, then local projects unit, New York State DOT. Good morning. Okay. All right, then let, let's begin. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, we just pretty much went around and did the introductions. We have, don't need a quorum, you said, Ashley? No, no quorum. Okay. So the first item is an opportunity for public comment. Uh, does anyone have anything they'd like to share? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, number three, which is accepting the meeting transcript from August 11th, 2020. And um, Ashley, uh, do you wanna comment on that? Sure, we just wanted to point out that at the August meeting, the only uh, action that has been taken thus far uh, concerning the Middletown funding request was taken at the August meeting um, and it's in the meeting transcript on page 52. And the committee agreed to allocate the 1.771 million of STPG large urban funding to Middletown. Um, and no one was opposed at the August meeting. So, and that's the only action that's been taken thus far. Okay, um, I know Jacob's shy. So I wanted to make sure the way I brought that up for him on his behalf. Um, they, your, their funding will be for 2021. Is that correct, Ashley? Yes, it was for 2021 and it's already been moved via an administrative modification. Okay, so there's nothing that needs to be done further in terms of, well, we're not voting this meeting anyway, but uh, that's in place? Yes, it's in place, and we just wanted to clarify because there was some confusion about it. Okay, any questions from anyone? All right, then we'll move on to number four, Transportation Improvement Program, and I'll ask Julie to comment on that first. Okay, so um, in element four here, we actually have two discussion items. Um, the ongoing request from Middletown for pins 8757.07 and 8760.98, stage one and stage two traffic operations. And, and kind of simultaneously, we have, we, I'm, we're going to start talking about an additional request for funds that we have from OC Parks for Heritage Trail segment three, which is pin 875705. Um, I would, we provided a great deal of backup information for you on these two requests um, for you to consider. Um, so uh, the reason we did this is so that we could offer uh, more transparency and allay any concerns that somehow um, decisions are being made outside of the OCTC meetings as discussed. So I, I want to be clear that we shared everything that we know thus far. And I'm gonna walk everyone through it because I know you got it late in the day and there's a lot of information you, and not everyone has 
may have had a chance to review it. I would ask that you let myself and staff get through the kind of background information and explanation of the information before we open it up for discussion on the two uh, requests for TIP funding. So as part of our last meeting, uh, the OCTC uh, board asked us to take a, a comprehensive look at all funding needs for all of uh, the MPO projects. Uh, we asked, uh, we, we distributed the TIP questionnaire and we asked all members to uh, consider their funding needs uh, in the future years. Um, the result of that was the result, re result the, the request resulted in two local project sponsors coming forward, which uh, we, we just mentioned. It's still the stage one, stage two traffic operations for Middletown. And now we have the Heritage Trail Segment 3 request. Um, before I get into the summary of each funding request, I want to pass it over to Lauren because we do have a project prioritization process in place. Um, we examine the two projects uh, with respect to how they line up um, with respect to our uh, LRTP goals and um, MPO planning goals. So um, I think both projects have merit, but I, I just, again, for the sake of transparency, I wanna just kind of walk it through so it's clear to everyone. So I'm gonna hand it over to Lauren for a moment. Hi, everyone. Um, so we looked at three elements. The first was the 2020 TIP questionnaires, both the city of Middletown and um, Orange County, the Heritage 3 segment submitted updated questionnaires. So what you see on the screen right now is um, basically just the, um, uh, oh man, <laughs> I'm losing my words. Um, summary. Summary. Oh my gosh, thanks Ashley. The summary <laughs> of all the tip questionnaires, um, including the current cost estimations right away, um, if right away is necessary, if funds have been obligated. Um, so this should look familiar. We've done this before for tip questionnaires. Um, so the next project prioritization element we looked at is CMAC. We are using CMAC funds. Um, so there are five projects right now that are using CMAC funds. All have completed um, their CMAC determinations. Um, so you can see in red that they've all been completed for each PIN. Um, and then it's just a breakdown of some of the details um, that were um, summarized in the CMAC application, including the project eligibility um, based on FHWA's um, CMAC guidance, and then also some of the main objectives that were in the, um, the CMAC applications. And then finally, um, we looked at FHWA's planning factors um, and looked at the summary of each project and tried to identify which one of the planning factors that these projects accomplished or supported. Um, and we've also adopted these planning factors in our LRTP. So as you can see, um, all three projects uh, support the planning factors. So that's my summary. Okay, I just wanna to add to that, Lauren, that um, when we sent out the tip questionnaires, we did get responses from, from more than just um, Middletown and Her uh, Parks, um, but no one had any additional requests for funding. Yeah. Okay. All right, so are you done, Lauren? Yeah, that's all I had. Okay, so now we'll get into the actual funding requests themselves. Um, for the Middletown project stages one and two, Middletown is requesting an additional $13 million for construction and construction inspection in federal fiscal years 2022 and 2023. Middletown currently has 7.9 million in construction and construction inspection funding on the tip. Just continue, our, in, something about safety. In federal fiscal year. Everything. Hey, Scott, you're, Scott mainly joined us and he's on the uh, speaker. So would you please mute? So I'll repeat that. So Middletown currently has 7.9 million in construction, construction inspection funding on the tip in 2021, which is what we clarified earlier 
uh, at the beginning of the meeting. And that includes, uh, so that includes 1.77 of 2021 STB large urban funds. And to oh, this point, no other funds have been allocated. Support the continuation group. Scott. Scott, Scott Manley. Yes, hold on. You please put your uh, speaker on mute when you're on the phone there. Thank you. Okay, so again, no other funds have been allocated to either stage one or two at this time. Middletown has proposed, um, I wanna make a correction in the information that we sent out uh, last evening, we, we used the term alternate bidding. Uh, Jacob would prefer we not use that term. Essentially, if my understanding is he's doing one base bid with multi-year construction phases with the phases aligning with the TIP funding years. Um, so with that said, um, I think I can still use the term for the base bid consists of 7.79 currently on the TIP in 2021. And then for discussion purposes, I'll say construction phase one is proposed for federal fiscal year 2022 in the amount of 3.8. and Construction phase two is proposed for federal fiscal year 23 in the amount of 9.14 million. Uh, at this point, I just wanna pause and say that the city can go out for the base bid amount, um, even if the additional funding for federal fiscal years 2022 and 2023 is not in place via TIP funding. I understand that they have obligations with NISDOT, that they have to sign off, that they have the full funding amount in place in order to proceed. The TIP may be the best way for them to proceed, but it's not the only option for the city. Um, whether that funding comes from the TIP or it may need to come from other sources. Um, but I do understand that the city needs to show how they are paying for the entire project. But um, I, I just, I don't feel that we need to put an undue burden on the MPO to make this project whole. So I just, uh, I, you know, I, I, I asked Jacob, let me, let me finish and get through and then we'll open it up for discussion. Well, it's, but it's not fair presentation that we're putting a new burden, undue burden on the, on the organization. You're okay. putting an okay. undue burden on the MPO to provide the full funding amount when you have options. Your process with DOT is not the same as your process with the MPO. So let, let's just get through the numbers and then we can have a discussion. Uh, maybe there's I nothing- I respectfully to... disagree with you. I'll, I'll address it when, I, when it's time for me to talk. Okay. Right. Jake, well, let's, let's let her make a presentation and then we'll have a full discussion. Go ahead, Julie. Okay, so for, for the Middletown project right now, um, the total construction, to, the total project cost is 20.9 million, um, which has changed since our last uh, discussion about the project, but we have the final engineering numbers now. Um, the funding requests for stages one and two are below on the sheet that we sent you. They're looking for 3.8 in STP large urban from 22, 5.3 STP large urban in 2023, and 3.7 from the CMAC block in 2023. Now I'm just gonna move quickly to the heritage trail request for segment three, which we also have before us. Um, OC Parks is requesting an additional um, 700,000 for construction, construction inspection in federal fiscal year 2022. OC Parks currently has 2.7 million in construction, construction inspection funding on the tip in federal fiscal year 2022. So the total project cost and construction inspection cost for the Heritage Trail segment three is 3.4 million. And the new funding request um, coming from STP Large Urban for the, for the year 2022 is 700,000. So with that, um, I believe that on the next page of your sheet, we have uh, what that looks like in terms of how it impacts the outer years and the calculations. So the, the first table there shows the impact of uh, on the STP large urban. And then 
the and then the, the middle block there is 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 the parks request and then the final table there is the impact on the CMAC and STP large urban or middle towns requests. So any questions on the totals so far? If if and this is presuming we we allocated all the funding that's being requested. Okay. Hearing none, I'm gonna toss it, I'm gonna toss it to Ashley at this moment to walk through what our options are with respect to addressing both of these requests. Hey, Ashley, if I may, uh, just a quick question. Is this being taped? Is this meeting being taped? Not that recorded, I'm aware of. Recorded, why, why shouldn't, shouldn't it be, it should be report, uh, recorded, right? I don't know, do you, do you know that Ashley or Julie? I think- yes, Sorry, I was on mute. All the meetings are recorded. Okay, there you okay. go. Thank you. Okay, uh, so as Julie said, um, there are a couple of options. So what I'm showing right now on the screen is if both the Heritage Trail Segment 3 uh, request and the Middletown request were both funded in full for 2022 and 2023, um, there would be, you can see up on the top of the screen here, there would be $100,000 left in the CMAC block in 2022, nothing in the STP large urban block, and 2023, there would be uh, no CMAC or large urban funding left in that block in those blocks. I will note that there are no construction, no projects slated for construction in 2023 right now. Um, and all the projects in 2022, currently the local projects, have been uh, started or initi initiated. So just so so you know. So then what you're seeing below the block allocations there is if it was funded in full, the, the, this is what Middletown would look like. They would have the 7.7 .7 million in 2021. They would have 4.6 million in 2022 and 9.4, 9.1 in 2023. Actually, I think the CMAC in Middletown is actually a mistake. So they, they would have the 3.899 in um, 2022, I'm sorry. And then in the last block here, you'll see um, for the Heritage Trail Segment 3, they would increase their construction costs by 700000 and they would have CMAC in totaling in $3.4 million for 2022. So, so that would be the first option if a full allocation for both requests was funded. Um, and so the, some of the other options, so or if the committee decided to do a partial allocation of funding for either Middletown or the Heritage Trail, that's um, up to you. And then obviously the numbers would reflect that um, depending on what the allocation looks like. You know, there would maybe be money left in some of the block pins in certain years. And then the other option is that uh, the committee could decide today that they don't want to make any of those allocations. And then both of those project sponsors would need to seek alternate funding sources for their projects. So those are kind of the, the overview of the, the options you have, but I think we can open it up to discussion. Julie, are you okay with that? I'd like yes. to clarify one thing first. Are you saying, Ashley and Julie, that uh, the, the ask by the city of Middletown and the ask by the County Parks Department for Heritage Trail, that there's enough money presently in those out years to cover both of those uh, asks? Yes. Yes. But you'll there's currently enough block funding to cover both of the requests. But that would pretty much- uh, it, leaves a, it leaves a balance of zero in several of the fiscal outer years. Okay. Well, it leaves a balance of $5.179 million for everybody else. In 2024. Right. Yeah. So the whole, the yeah. whole clip I'm talking about, yes. You have still $5.179 million left. Okay. All right, then let's open up a discussion. All right, uh, let me let me start if I may, Ashley. Go ahead. Sure. Yes, sir. So I just want to address Julie's uh, point in there when she said we're potentially putting undue, undue burden, and I want I want to make this meeting as pleasant as possible. And and uh, but I just want to I want to address whatever uh, misstatements are made. We've been asking for this additional funding, for the record, for a couple of years now. It's not a surprise to anybody. 
In January this year, Orange County Transportation Council requested the questionnaire to update all projects that are on the tip. Many people responded, we responded, we submitted the same, pretty much the same questionnaire that we resubmitted today, we added for it uh, construction uh, inspection fund for the consultant. That's the only thing we added. Our questionnaire back in January was the same thing as similar to what we've done now. We're trying to push, what we're trying to do is allocate the fund in there so we can advertise the project and move forward. Due to certain elements, it was decided that we will not advertise this project for bid in October, prior to October, prior to the current fiscal year, federal fiscal year, and we pushed it to 2021 federal fiscal year because it will give everybody a factor of comfort to finish the project and make sure we're not rushed. So we're ready to go out for construction. City of Middletown is putting its own funding. The money is sitting there without any uh, request for it, the additional, the additional money. It's been Orange County Transportation Council policy, policy to support any project that is ready to go forward for construction. And if there is tremendous demand, then we will have a balance. We will never so lucky to have so much demand for the money. All the time, the money just sitting there, aging like wine, and nobody's using it. And the criticism against Orange County Transportation Council, hey guys, you just have a book the money and nobody's using it and you look silly and the state is gonna take it. And so that was that was that was the dilemma that we've been having. Now it's it's I think we're showing the result of our success. All this money is gonna be built in Orange County, the money is gonna be spent in Orange County. City of Middletown has stepped up and they're saying we'll do the construction through this difficult period, the COVID and the financial difficulty. We'll, we're, we're willing to put our match. We want to have construction. We want to build. We want to be ready for the future. So moving forward in there again, going back to Julie's point in November, uh, I'm sorry, August 11th, we had a meeting in there and Ashley, she sent out an email. We discussed this whole thing, what we're discussing now. We discussed it again prior in, in, in August. Ashley, she sent out a notification and I forwarded that to Harry a couple of weeks ago, Harry Poor, showing him that Ashley put everybody on notice. Hey guys, this is what Middletown, this is what we discussed in the previous planning committee. This is, we're gonna put an ad in, the, we're gonna put our uh, public hearing notification or public notification that Middletown is asking for the money to be able to vote for it in the next policy meeting. Next policy meeting that we just had in, in um, September, uh, no vote, obviously, and we had some discussion, further discussion. So we should have voted on it on September 11th. That was canceled for some reason, although Ashley rightfully put all the proper notifications, she did the homework to advise everybody of the changes and the requests because it was discussed fully in the previous council. But me, moving forward, you guys came up with another request for questionnaire, okay? You have only two people who responded to it asking for additional funding, Middletown, and Orange County uh, uh, Parks Department. And that's it. And, and these are the people who are telling you, hey guys, we're serious about going forward for construction. We need the funding. Uh, we're ready to go forward. Let's spend this money instead of it sitting there, just, uh, you know, just like wine, you know, hope, hope, hoping uh, for it to get uh, better. Um, once we're done by between us and Orange County, if we take the requested amount, we'll put everybody to work, number one, have construction in Orange County, number two. And number three, you still have $5.1 million or almost $5.2 million left for everybody else. Assuming that everybody on the tip is gonna be constructing as they are programmed to construct because some people, they may not construct, hence you're gonna have more funding available, more than the $5.1 million. And, and then the mayor and I, mayor is, is also on Zoom uh, with me in here in the same office, we're requesting your support everybody in this uh, in this meeting. Thank you. Hey, Jacob, you know, I just wanted to say, uh, don't assume that anybody's against this program. We, we are very supportive of what you're doing in Middletown. Uh, I just wanted to have the opportunity for all of our members to uh, share their thoughts. And with that, I'd like to open it up right now. Uh, any of the other members have any comments they'd like to make? Okay, so I'll start since... Uh... Uh, so I have several questions. Number one, 
the Middletown project is two pins. Is that still correct? Yes, one pin, uh, Mike, is, is just a placeholder for $100,000. Correct. Okay, so it's still it's still listed as two pins. So, yep. so I, I need clarification from perhaps DOT about the issue Julie raised about full, they have to demonstrate full funding. Hi. Uh, this is Donnie and Diani. Hi, it's Sandra. Oh, it's Sandra. Do you, Hello, it's go ahead, Sandra. Sandra. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just with all, and just keep in mind that New York State DOT's role in this process is that we're really just um, making sure that when projects are provided federal funds, we basically make sure that those federal funds are spent consistent with the federal requirements. And one of those requirements is that before a project can go out for bid, the obviously the feds and the state, and even, you know, I would assume the sponsor of the project, we want to make sure that we're not going out to bid with projects that aren't fully funded. So it's a funding at the very end of the process, it's just a commitment. And the local sponsor on all projects signs off that yes, they have the funds to cover this project when it goes out to bid, even if the bids come in a little high. Now, of course, when the bids do come in, um, you know, we've had situations where the bids have come in and they've come in high and then, you know, the local sponsor can consider if they want to proceed with the project or not. Um, but at the point of going out to bid, you know, everyone is looking to make sure that a project has the funding, at least that matches the engineer's estimate. So and pin, I think that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so stage one pin is fully funded. Um, now these two, it's one project, and I'm assuming when it goes out to bid, it's gonna go out as one project. There just happens to be two pins because of the way the project was funded in the past. But for, for purposes of this discussion, you should be considering it one project and it will go out to bid as one project, not as two projects. Okay, so, and again, I'll, I'll reiterate that the money in 22 and 23 uh, is not, it can't be spent till then, correct? Is that correct? Correct. But what we've done, and we've done this in the past with other sponsors, this isn't anything unique, is that when sometimes, you know, you do have a situation where a project uh, might be falling short in one, in one particular federal fiscal year, maybe when it was let. So it might be let at the end of the federal fiscal year, and it's short some funds. But the MPO may say, okay... Um, we don't have any additional funds in that particular year, but you're really not going to be incurring construction bills on that project until the following federal fiscal year. So the MPO would have the ability, you know, to say, okay, you know, we have some money in the next federal fiscal year that we can um, provide to this project. So it really then just becomes a matter of when you expect the bills um, to be hitting um, the state and the feds, as long as the construction activity and the construction funds are aligned in, you know, relatively in the same federal fiscal year, um, you can do that. You can have the construction funds, you know, over multiple years, especially obviously if it's a bigger project and you are going to have construction over multiple seasons. Okay. And then the second question I have is there are three projects in 2022, one in the city of Newburgh, two in the village of KJ or the town of Palm Tree. And I, I understand from the presentation, none of those three requested any additional funding. Can, do we know the status of where those projects are? Are they going to be done I, in 2022? I don't know. And I would prefer to go back to the office and we can follow up with the um, with the status of those projects after the meeting. Because I'm just curious, they total about $8 million and I, I can't believe that the way we've seen projects escalate that the, they aren't gonna request more money, but 
just so everyone on the council is aware of that. And then, and then I, then WS, I WSP is also the consultant for that project as well. Katie, Katie yeah. uh, I mean, you're our consultant. I mean, Newberg, they had the chance to address it. Anybody who wanted more money, he had the chance to address it. I, rec I recognize that, Jacob. And, 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 and this time as well, let me finish. Just, I, I'm answering because Katie wanted to jump in. And uh, Newberg is not here. They didn't ask, ask for additional money. They did not, uh, you know, so, so maybe they're satisfied. Why would we? Why? Why would we assume anything else for any of the eight uh, eight million dollar projects? Why we keep? Because that question keeps coming up. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mike. I'm not being rude. And just the same question keeps coming up. So please go ahead. Right. I just wanted to give a status update on the project. That as the consultants for the both Newberg jobs, WSP, they're really just in the preliminary engineering phase of it. They just started traffic counts. You know, their beginning analysis. They still have to go through the whole design report process before they can even, you know, get to construction. They're already talking about doing administrative changes to moving their construction funding to, um, you know, 2022 and 2023. I don't know if that helps you out at all. Well, it just, it, it just speaks to the point that they're probably going to, they're probably going to look for more money. That's all, but okay. Um, it, at their at their rate they're going yeah. though it's probably 2024 when yeah. there are available funds katie you, you're our consultant i don't i'm sorry you're our consultant i don't i don't feel comfortable addressing a newberg project okay please i mean it just let's let's move on I thought the engineer for newberg was on the call jason are you on the call joe do not yeah okay sorry yeah. Harry. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm on. I didn't unmute myself. Okay. Can you clarify? Um, WSP is correct. We're in the preliminary design phases for that project. So we can't say for or against whether we're going to need uh, more funds at this point. Okay. Mike, do you want to continue? That's my questions. Um, just everyone needs to recognize there will be no more money till 2024. Well, there's five, at least $5.2 million. Oh, this is, um, hold on just one second. This is Sandra again from State DOT. Um, the only thing, and I definitely recognize the concern with obviously allocating all the funds right now, but one of the things that folks should also be keeping in mind is that um, we are being measured on our, what they call our TIP performance and each MPO, um, including the state, in their ability to deliver their programmed funding. And the projects that you have on the table right now that are seeking to, for additional funds, um, they are going to be delivered. So, you know, one of the things just to consider, in addition to considering that, oh my gosh, we might be allocating all our funds, is that you you would be allocating all your funds, but they're on projects that will be delivered, and it would potentially help your STIP performance. So I just wanted to, you know, throw that out for the committee to think about too. Um, that's it. Yeah, we're also very. Kind of let, let me just add, let me just add for the village official uh, context here. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Middletown has need. Uh, other projects have a maybe need, uh, and I would definitely, I would agree that uh, maybe needs by other applicants forward. Uh, if we have which is construction, which is quite difficult in these state projects because of all the property taking issues facing, I would uh, support very strongly middle town. Okay, Gadai, you were breaking up a little bit, but I got the last sentence, so we, we understand your position. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mike, are you done? I am. Is there anyone else who would like to comment on this? Any of the members? I would just say that, you know, that the, you, the county portion of this discussion, uh, we're ready to go to, and we're totally committed to, uh, to finishing that Heritage Trail. That will be done timely. 
Can can I ask one other question, Mary? Uh, no. Of DOT, the Middletown project, as proposed to go out to bid, is is are they authorized to go out to bid at this point? They they have we submitted the final Sandra? design. Excuse me, we we submitted the final final design, and DOT is doing the final review right now. Once we get the final review review approved. That will uh, that will uh, constitute going out for bid, if I understand the process correctly. Sandra and Katie, they can correct me if I'm wrong, but we have 100 percent. Yeah, no, I think Sorry. yeah, you you guys are very far along. The last uh, I, that I uh, remember checking like last week on the project status, and it's very far along. Yeah, we submitted the final design. It's in the DOT's hands. We're expecting comments. Within a week or two. Let me confirm with Danya. Actually, Danya is is was the last submission actually a PSNE package that we're reviewing. So Sandra, it looks like we're looking at the detailed design package here. Hold on, let me just take a quick look. From my understanding, it's still under DOT's review, like Jacob said. Um, but mm -hmm. I am understanding that this is in detailed design. Um, so it appears that it's still under review so i'm not going to say it's, it's okay uh, we, yet. we we yeah. received comments back yesterday oh you did okay great. okay i didn't know that okay. it was late afternoon okay which is which is good okay okay so, uh is, john yeah. Ravilla, so you joined us you have any comments yeah, I have a yeah just two questions one i uh, just want to make sure they have um Usually there's contingency built into the project that that's covered in this one. So if there's any unforeseen costs that that's covered, if we're gonna give them the full funding that it's done and we don't have to worry about coming back to the drawing board or coming back to the table for other funding. And number two, if they come in under that funding would be, or if some other need comes up and Middletown somehow doesn't need all of it, they could reallocate to another project or is that stuck once it's allocated? I would think that they're not. They're going to probably need more money than than less. But, Never know. <laughs> no, but if it does go under, that's a good point. If it does go on, if it comes in under, it comes in under. Obviously, we can't eat the money, so the money will be available for everybody else. Julie, do you have the answer to that? Actually, I'm going to defer to Ashley on that. Ashley, we don't eat it, do we? Um, I'm Can actually <laughs> going to ask Sandra for clarification. If they've already obligated the funding and then they realize they don't need that additional funding, would they be able to reallocate it to another project? We typically do not do that um, because usually, uh, but what we could do if it, that is a concern um, and it comes significantly in under, again, like um, Harry is saying, it's probably unlikely, but if that does happen, we can um, revisit that. What we would need to do, it all has to do with your planning target and where you are on your obligations, okay? So there's really no easy answer. There's really no definite yes or no on that, but it is something that we could uh, take a look at um, and, and kind of see where you are as an MPO on your obligations um, at that point in time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want, you know, just in case, I, I know that there's always an issue that might pop up. I mean, uh, it's a great project. It's great for the county as a whole, I believe. So is the county Heritage Trail, obviously. And hopefully there's not a need that comes up within those next two years that someone needs help with and, and we're fine. Um, or maybe there's another pool of money that pops up somewhere, but hopefully we can get this going, get this project started so that the costs don't keep increasing and maybe we could have some reallocation. Okay. That's all. Anyone else uh, comment on this topic? Uh, uh, this is Al Fusco. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not representing any voting members here other than I am representing, uh, you know, Middletown as well. But uh, I do, and I'm very happy to see the way this is going. Uh, I've been on the uh, board since its inception as Newburgh Orange, and we've always had difficulty uh, spending money before. And I'm happy to see that we're on a roll with this. We rallied for Fort Jervis. Uh, we're now rallying for Middletown. And I'm sure we'll rally for Newburgh uh, when they need it as well. And it's good to see that the system is working appropriately. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Anyone else? Okay, I, I would just, you know, from the county's point of view, uh, just what Al said and what uh, others have said, including Sandra, Project's are ready to go. Money's on the table. 
Um, no one else is competing for it. It seems to me logical and, and appropriate to, you know, to be supportive as we did in Port Jervis. Um, uh, Julie, uh, there's no vote taking today, right? There's no vote taking, uh, but I mean, I think we need to clarify whether we have a consensus one way or the other to move in one particular direction. That way it could be voted on at the uh, November meeting. Okay, I, again, I just gave you the county's point of view. We're supportive of this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would like to see that the, uh, on the agenda for the next meeting when we have a vote you know, that will take place. Uh, anybody else? I open it up. Any other thoughts? Any other opinions? Do we have any holdouts, I guess, at this point? If, if the option is option A, fully allocate what's being asked for both projects. Um, I hate to leave money on the table. Okay, well, I'm just putting put in now to the rest of the members. Well, if we don't allocate it, where does it go? Doesn't it go to another MPO? That's a deal. I'd rather stay here. <laughs> that's a DOT question. That's what I'm saying. I don't like to leave any money on the table. No, I agree. Okay, then let's do this. Let's let's tee it up. Let's tee it up. Oh, yes. Since I've since I've sort of been the thorn in the side of this issue, um, I I as long as there are no objections from other members that they understand there's no allocation going to be happening in 2021, 20, 22, 23. I'm not going to stand in the way of the project. I think Middletown uh, is is on a, a great uptick. They've done a lot of great work, and the improvements there help the entire county. People just need to understand it. That's all. And uh, to be to be quite frank, I guess what was troubling from the start was this council had a discussion that they should proceed and complete stage one. And then suddenly that morphed into doing the whole thing at once. And, and that was not fully discussed. But I will support the project at the council meeting. Well, Mike, I don't think that uh, describing yourself as a thorn is the right thing to do. This is a, a discussion that had to be had. And uh, I thank you for uh, being supportive of that and for your position on the, uh, the funding currently. Um, they're ready to go. It's an important project. Uh, the money's here. Uh, same thing with the, the Heritage Trail. So, uh, you know, again, I think let's, let's go with what we have. Um, you know, Jacob's so charming anyway. You know, he always wins the day with that charm. And uh, I had to learn <laughs> He's lessons. Beating from me him. up, Harry. He's <laughs> beating me up, man. Thank you're you. Not, you're not, you're not even Irish and you're so charming. I don't get it. But uh, anyway, uh, so we will. I, I wanna, Harry, I want to thank you and Mike and uh, everybody that is supportive of this. I, I really mean it. We, we appreciate that very much. The mayor is here too, and he's. He's listening and we sincerely appreciate it. No problem. Uh, okay, so what we'll do, Julie and Ashley, is tee this up for our next meeting where a vote will be taken. We still have time from now till then. If anything should emerge, if any, any topic needs to be discussed further, uh, we will uh, allow for that to happen as well. Okay. All right. So just so everyone's clear, we will set a November 10th policy meeting for 1 p.m. then and we will be voting on these TIP allocations uh, showing currently on the screen with $700,000 going to OC Parks for Heritage Trail Segment 3 in 2022, and then the 3.899 of Large Urban in 22 to Middletown, as well as the 3.787 and the 5.355 of STP Large Urban for a total of 9.1 million in 2023 to Middletown. So that will be going out for public comment shortly, actually. Okay. All right, if that's the uh, end of our discussion, then we'll move on to the local project sponsor updates. Does have anyone have anything they wanna share? Well, I'll start. ADA, uh, Curbs and Sidewalks project is progressing very nicely uh, throughout the city of Middletown. And um, so it's moving along. Uh, we're probably gonna have some shutdown soon if weather gets, uh, Cool. not soon, I mean, relatively in a month or so. And then we'll start again early spring on Dolson Avenue. So that's where we are. Um, the traffic, the uh, roundabout, it's obviously completed, it's been in service for a long time. 
and we have some minor funding in their leftover between us and DOT. We're trying to iron it out so we can get the funding back to the city. Uh, what's remaining uh, payment for the consultant and um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, when are we gonna cut a ribbon on that bridge in Port Jervis? Jack? Well, I, I hope once this COVID stops and um, I think in the, probably in the springtime now, I'll speak with the mayor and we'll, uh, cause we're pretty much done. Uh, we have nothing. We're just doing final paperwork with DOT now. Um, so I would, I'll speak with the mayor, but I'm hoping in the spring when the weather changes around that way, uh, hopefully this, this pandemic is straightened out and <clears throat> we could have a better, a better celebration. Great. Is there any other local project sponsor updates? Yeah, I have a- uh, From the- uh, Good. You wanna go, John? Is that John? Uh, it was Jason, City of Newburgh. Uh, yeah. From City of Newburgh, we have the uh, Lake Drive Bridge that's currently under construction. Construction is going well. The contractors are drilling and grouting piles uh, for the new bridge. Um, they've ran into some obstructions underground, subsurface changes, uh, but generally the project is looking for, uh, like it will we'll be on schedule for a completion date uh, end of this year, beginning of next year. Okay, great. Uh, John Ravelli? Uh, no, it's, it's uh, yeah. yeah, we finished our uh, Ulster Avenue sidewalk curb and walls, <clears throat> railings. They're most of the drainage structure. There's still only two drainage structures that are left to do, and that's completed. Uh, we're just there was just some lead time waiting for that. Otherwise, it's finished. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? Yeah, I have the Warwick uh, project. We got uh, we got under the deadline to get the uh, go ahead for construction uh, bidding, and I want to thank DOT, uh, especially Steve McAvery. He he brought us over the finish line. Also, the county, Damian. Brady, the county attorney's office, because it is a project that goes into the county park. Um, without them, we wouldn't have made it. And uh, we'll go out to bid in January with construction in the spring. Okay, we, we really get uh, compliments about our law department, but I'll pass those along. Thank you very much. You got it. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Harry, we have the Heritage Trail segment too. Yes. It's still under construction. Uh, we, we've actually paved from Hartley Road with uh, the binder from Hartley Road to Palmer Avenue. Um, and they're proceeding with the installation of all the bridge railings and the fence along the trail. So we expect to have that portion of it completed before the end of the year. I understand you have the, the binder cost down right now, but you're gonna put the final uh, soon? Uh, soon, yep. They're Actually, I believe today they're doing the the um, concrete detectable warnings at all the crossings, and then they'll finish up with the bind with the top, and they have to finish up with the fencing and the, the safety railing. Okay, the DPW commissioner yesterday, just so you know, Travis, uh, committed to having that done uh, before snow flies this year. So you should know that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, anyone else? All right, then let's move on to number five, old business. Cooperative Community Program call for projects update, and I'll ask Ashley to address that. Okay, thanks, Harry. Uh, so if everyone remembers, we sent out um, a solicitation for applications for the Cooperative Community Program, which is a call for projects for next uh, year's UPWP. Uh, so we sent out the solicitation in August, and we received three applications, all from the city of Newburgh, and we are currently, uh, we'll be reviewing them shortly and we're putting the call back out. If any of the OCTC members would like to be on the review committee, please just let us know and we'll include you. Uh, the three applications from the city of Newburgh include um, a Lake Street corridor wayfinding study, a micro transit feasibility study, and a sidewalk program feasibility study. So those are the applications that we received. So we'll have more updates in coming meetings. Okay, and if there's any questions regarding any of that, uh, let's talk about the West Central Transportation and Land Use Connection Study. Uh, Julie? Yeah, actually, I'm gonna give an update on the Regional Transit Study as well as the West Central. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the Mid-Hudson Valley TMA Regional Transit Study. Um, we, the draft summary memo or the final tech memo was recirculated to OCTC staff last week. 
Um, we're in the process of reviewing it. It has been revised somewhat, but it's uh, still under review by the other two counties. Uh, one of the primary issues with the initial draft was that we needed, like many MPOs are having to face right now, we needed to sort of reconcile the recommendation section, the survey results, and the original market and service analysis uh, within the context of the COVID pandemic and its impacts on planning, as much of the analysis was done under pre-COVID conditions. Um, we're kind of facing this issue, as I said, with all of our studies, but um, in this particular study, because uh, the impact of COVID has been so heavy on the public transit service, um, we've chosen to kind of incorporate it in that way exactly as a, a sort of a hybrid with the future of the public transit as an unknown. We are weighing our options to focus recommendations around um, other things, including microtransit options, uh, com commuter service improvements, including service monitoring and oversight, congestion hotspot mitigation, park and ride capacity improvements, and real-time dissemination and mobile payment options. Um, it's a tricky balance with the microtransit option. You know, we're trying not to put all our eggs in one basket, and that needs to be further researched in terms of funding and the cost to operate and its potential competition with fixed route service. Um, but that's what we're kind of in the process of trying to uh, reconcile. Um, the study will include a financial analysis also um, as a ending chapter, and that will address how 5307 funding is allocated throughout the TMA region and pairing that and any other identified funding sources with the implementation of the proposed recommendations. So the consultant, which is Foursquare LTP in this case, uh, their co contract expires the end of this December. We'll need to have the finalized draft posted to the project website and circulated to members for review by November. A final round of public workshops is required once the development of the final draft plan is complete. So uh, at this point in time, the consultant will be providing an abbreviated presentation at both the Ulster and Duchess MPO meetings on November 24th at 10 a.m. and 1.30 respectively, and at our December OCTC planning meeting on the 8th. Uh, we're still working out the logistics on a more comprehensive presentation that would be open to the public and conducted virtually at the TMA level. Um, and at that point, you know, the information would be presented to all three counties with an opportunity for Q&A. And we will, we are looking to have a, a recorded presentation posted on the project website as well. So. Uh, likely though that uh, larger public meeting, which again, this is all virtual, will likely happen in December as well. So we'll circulate that information as soon as it becomes available. And now moving on to our West Central TLC study. The West Central study is now active again. Uh, the macro update or big picture update is that we've added another component to the scope which would better incorporate the larger study area and make it a more inclusionary plan rather than just the three communities where the major corridors of focus were identified. The study components now kind of look like what's in the presentation on the screen. Um, we have uh, on the left, you'll see the varying levels of analysis, one, two, three, starting with the global and working down to the micro. Um, the three columns to the right represent the transportation elements to be reviewed. Um, as we move down the phases of each element, we increase the level of detail and focus. So we start globally and then we get down to more specifics. Um, the third column there, active transportation is the new add-on. Um, 
And we're defining active transportation as non-motorized access and opportunities within the study area, both in and around the three corridors, as well as to and from other points of interest within the communities in the study area. Our staff planner, Zach Coleman, provided a comprehensive intense GIS spatial analysis, identifying future opportunities in the active transportation area. Uh, it was based on data layers that we accumulated, such as sidewalk networks, transit stops, abandoned rail right of ways, projects already in planning stages, existing land use, et cetera. There's approximately 30 layers of data that we looked at and we provided that to the consultant for further explanation in the active transportation section. And um, I will just add on, on the uh, level of analysis as we move through the three components is going to be dependent upon what we can do in the last number three step will be dependent upon cost and as well as the time left on the contract. So that's kind of still to be defined. On the, <clears throat> on the actual traffic piece on the, on the corridors component, excuse me, <clears throat> the traffic counts were conducted earlier this month. Um, the counts will be reduced and compared to historical counts to see how current traffic conditions compared to the pre-COVID conditions. And um, we'll have an update on that uh, with our next meeting with AKRF. So we'll, we will have more information to provide at our next. Is that gonna, is that gonna include mass transit also? What's yes. happening to the rails? Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, get, get to that. Um, so um, yes, the other component uh, that I can update on now and really, I, I don't want to get into too much of an update. There's a lot of things to update, but we need to pre present this to the SAG um, and post it on the website for everyone to have a chance to review before we really get into um, the progress, the, the, the details of the progress. But um, we closed uh, the survey, the online survey, which was focused on travel patterns in the three primary corridors. We closed that at the end of September. Um, just a kind of a snapshot of the results. Um, hang on one second. Can you move to the next slide, Ashley? So kind of the preliminary uh, snapshot of the survey results is we had 149 responses and uh, Route 211 had 59 survey takers, Route 94, 39, and Route 17M had 41. Key takeaways of the survey included that so many felt the corridors are already multimodal. Uh, there were speeding and congestion were common complaints. Many requested safer crossings for pedestrians and bicyclists. Bike lanes, bike paths, and sidewalks were requested on all three corridors. Um, during the, we had uh, pre, we had COVID questions included in the survey. So during the pandemic, driving decreased, whereas walking, biking increased. And after the pandemic, there's a general sense that the potential, there's a potential for increase in driving, walking, and biking, suggesting that um, driving conditions may go back to levels pre-COVID, but as walking and biking have increased that we may maintain that increase. Um, and then suggested improvements that have the highest percentage of responses included uh, on the pedestrian side, additional and safer crosswalks, sidewalks, crosswalk signals and improved lighting. And on the bicycle improvements side, it included uh, off-road bicycle paths um, bicycle crossings and bike lanes and lighting. Um, again, we'll have the full analysis of the survey results posted on the uh, project website once we have a chance to review the, uh, the analysis with the study advisory group. And then lastly, just on the West Central, there is this transit study component. Um, kind of where we are, just a snapshot of that, 
um, the transit study component focuses on Middletown with travel to and from Middletown from the other major towns, uh, including Walk Hill, Chester, Goshen, Fort Jervis, and Warwick. Uh, the consultant team has focused on uh, reviewing access in and around Middletown that currently do not have uh, good access to fixed transit. Um, and this was done by drawing a buffer around the transit lines and looking at nearby vulnerable populations, including individuals who are low income or elderly and identifying people who do not have access to the existing transit system. Uh, the Cam Cambridge, who is the consultant for that piece, also looked at trip activity in Middletown by the block group and found that over 93,000 trips per day were made throughout Middletown with over 900,000 trips throughout Orange County. Um, so that's pretty significant finding. Um, they also re review the um, origin destination block group pairs with the largest demand. And one example that provided the largest origin destination market was the medical center to ShopRite. So uh, all of these things and examining them um, and in, in examining travel to and from Middletown and the other municipalities that I mentioned, the greatest demand was between Walk Hill and Middletown at 56% of the analyzed trips. Um, so this data indicates that there's potential for improvements such as uh, extension of fixed routes or other alternatives. So the next steps of that transit component of the study are to review the existing transit availability and conduct a gaps analysis. And then lastly, when we get to the end, uh, they'll make some high level recommendations that will support future service planning and improvements within Middletown. So um, that is the update on those two studies. Okay, let's open it up. Any comments or questions uh, for Julie on this topic? Okay, hearing none, uh, let's move on to new business. And uh, Julie, um, to my understanding, we're gonna have a 10 minute presentation on the Heritage Trail Counts Program presentation? Yes. Okay, so uh, Lauren, are you gonna handle that? Yep. Take it away. So, I, thank you, Harry. Today, I'm gonna give you a brief uh, presentation on the Heritage Trail Counts. Orange County Planning Department staff conducted manual counts in September of 2020. So today I'll just um, go over an overview of the program, um, share with you the count findings, and then highlight some next steps. Ooh. Okay, there we go. You guys see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Why count? So um, performing uh, bicycle and pedestrian counts can help identify use and need for future investments, assisting grant program applications and future funding opportunities, as well as estimate the impact and economic benefits of the surrounding communities. Um, one example is the Park and Trails New York. Um, they published a brochure in which they shared results from a National Park Service study on three different rail trails, one urban, one suburban, and one rural. And they found that the trail use pumped between $1.2 and $1.9 million annually into nearby uh, community economies. So um, we kind of proposed doing these Thank counts. You. We propose doing these counts um, this year, really because of COVID. Um, we heard a lot of anecdotal, um, well, anecdotes of people, more bikers, more pedestrians out on the trail. And we did not have any baseline data to really analyze this. So we wanted to get out there and get the counts done um, as soon as possible. So um, we got some stakeholder buy-in. Um, we selected locations and peak periods for the counts. We identified some data needs and overlap um, that we had on the Heritage Trail. And then we trained um, counters in August of 2020. So we conducted the counts in September, um, September 8th through 12th. We did one weekday, which was a Wednesday, the 
I think it was the ninth, and um, one weekend, which was Saturday. And then post counts will be looking to, um, in the medium to long term, set up a permanent counter or short count program on Heritage Trail, as well ex as expand that count program out um, to other multi-use trails and high density intersections. Um, another goal would be to um, do a Heritage Trail user survey. We did not conduct one this year because of COVID. We didn't want to put staff or users at risk. Um, so Heritage Trail count details, as I said, we did three locations on Wednesday, September 8th and Saturday, September tw uh, 12th. We did um, counts in Monroe. We did peak times, so the 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. block, a two-hour block, and then a 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. block on that Wednesday. Um, we also did that with Chester, those same times. And then on Saturday, we did 9 to 12 p 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. for all three locations. For Goshen, because uh, the location is closer to our um, office and we were able to get more staff out there, we were able to do a full day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. counts for that Wednesday. So here's a map of the locations. The Goshen location we counted at Green Street on the other side of the crossing. Um, and you can see the new bike pump that Joe Fix its uh, donated and had, and I think DPW installed on the trail. Um, so we were right next to there. Um, the Chester location, we were on the right side of the uh, Erie Station kiosk, um, right at the old um, station, uh, I guess is the Hor Historical Society meets there now. Um, and then at the Monroe location, we did par the parking ride lot A trail parking. Um, so we are about 50 to 75 feet um, north of that park entrance, the parking entrance. So our methodology, we use National Bicycle and Pedestrian Documentation Project's methodology, so we did not make this up. We use something that is established. Um, it's uh, a screen line or an invisible line that intersects the width of the trail, and we counted everyone that passed through that screen line. We did it for two hours in 15-minute increments. We counted bicyclists, pedestrians, and then also skateboarders, rollerbladers, which were included in, another, in the um, other category. Um, and then a person who passed by a point more than once was still was counted each time they passed. And here's just an example of the count form that we used. Other things we added, um, we included helmets. So we had a total of, we counted the total number of helmets used and then also we had a notes box that were uh, was meant for observations but when we were out there people really loved to talk to us so we got a lot of really good user comments as well um, so the difference between pedestrians bicyclists and other um, one noteworthy thing is um, pedestrians that were carrying children were counted as one whereas if the child was able to walk by themselves. Um, you could count them as a user. Same with bicyclists. If there was a child on the back of a um, trailer or something like that on a bike, they were counted as one. Whereas if a child was riding their own bike, they were counted um, as a sing another tally. Um, so I'll go through the findings. So here are some charts of um, the three locations. As you can see, Goshen, we had the 12 hour span. Um, and then in Monroe and Chester, the two-hour peaks. Um, and then the two different colors, you have the Goshen, or the bicyclists are in the lighter colors, pedestrians are in the darker, and then other is darkest. So uh, in the bottom right corner, you can look see comparatively how um, the usage at the three areas compares. And um, just for all these slides, Goshen is represented in green, yellow is Monroe, uh, and blue is Chester. Um, so, and then weekend usage, we did the same three hours, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And um, you can see the same. And then in the bottom right, the comparative um, to the three locations. And so I'm just going to highlight, oh, sorry. And then this is the average hourly use and then the modal split um, for Monroe and Chester for both the weekend and weekday, you had a higher 
um, proportion of bicyclists. Um, same as Goshen on the weekend, you had a higher rate of bicyclists. Whereas during the Goshen weekday, you had a higher percentage of pedestrians. So just a summary of findings, Goshen had the highest use for weekday peaks as well as the weekend. Um, they saw a higher use of pedestrians compared to Chester and Monroe, uh, while Chester had the highest use of bicyclists. And um, one more thing to note, because we use this screen line methodology, and if you've ever been to um, the Chester Heritage Trail entrance, you can either go left or right. We only counted people that went right. Um, and there were majority of people did go right, but there were some people that went left that were not counted, which may be why um, Chester had the lowest number of users. So based on this extrapolation of Goshen's PM peak two hours, so that 4 to 6 PM, um, we can estimate annual trail usage at um, almost half a million users per year. Um, some of the comments and observations, both pedestrians and bicyclists commented on uh, safety concerns, um, bicyclists going too fast, pedestrians not um, staying to one side. Um, bicyclists also commented that they use the Heritage Trail because they feel unsafe riding on roads. Um, one user noted, especially the Chester bicyclist being killed on Craigville Road earlier this summer was one of the reasons that they use the Heritage Trail now. Uh, other comment, we got a lot of thumbs up, a lot of commenters asked what we were doing, and when we said we were counting the trail, they showed a ton of support for the program, support for the trail. Um, they expressed interest in expansion of the trail. Um, and also, um, I believe Orange County Sheriff actually patrols by via bike um, the Heritage Trail. So we um, spoke with him as well. Um, so crime was not prevalent on the trail, but there were some uh, individual injuries. Um, and one complaint was um, mileage postings not being uniform, especially with the expansion of the Heritage Trail. The markings are, I believe, within um, Goshen and Monroe's, um, either the park and ride or the airplane park. Um, and it doesn't cover the full trail now. Um, some of the observations, a lot of trail users utilized all the trail facilities, including the bike pump stations, benches, porta potties. Um, they even saw a family viewing the educational kiosk along the trail in Chester. Um, a lot of the parking lots had New Jersey plates, especially on weekdays, um, during the weekday in Chester. Um, many of the cars had bike racks, so um, that tells us that all users are not only local, that some people are traveling to um, use the Heritage Trail. And helmet usage varied across age and gender, as well as mask usage. So what's next? Um, we're creating a report to share the findings with Orange County agencies, including Tourism, Economic Development, and the County Executive's Office. Um, we also would like to establish a bicycle pedestrian count program. Um, so that will depend on the type, the cost, location, seasonality, and whatnot, um, and possibly a survey with the 2021 counts. So all of that can be discussed later as we update our UPWP for next year. And um, that's all I have. My contact information is on the screen if you have any questions or comments. Lauren, that was a very good presentation. Thank you very much. I'm told by Parks Commissioner Brooks that the Heritage Trail is our second most used park in Orange County. Uh, is there any questions or comments uh, regarding uh, Lauren's presentation? And we can provide this information, make this information available for anyone who might need it. It's, I'm sure, useful for grant applications and other um, plans and studies. Any comments, questions? Again, thank you, Lauren. Very, very well done. Uh, let's move on to number seven, Orange County uh, Transportation Council staff reports. Who would like to go first? I'll Maria. just reiterate, Ms. Ashley, that um, we're scheduled a November 10th policy meeting at 1 p.m. and we'll be voting on the TIP amendment we recently talked about, uh, allocating the funds from the block pins to Middletown and the Heritage Trail segment three. So we'll be sending out a calendar uh, save the date. Okay. Is uh, Rob Harrington there? 
Yes, sir. You have a um, I, I just wanted to go over uh, with the CARES funding. So most of our transit operators, I reported last time, most pretty much all our transit operators are back to their new normal. Some of them never even closed, but all the ones that were closed, you know, are back online now. But Coach USA is still pretty affected pretty heavily. I found out this week that they still have 60% of their employees are on furlough. So Coach USA is not close to being, you know, back to normal. Uh, so that's a concern, but, you know, there's hope that things will slowly, you know, get back as COVID gets further under control. Um, and then with the CARES funding, so with the CARES Act, traditionally federal operating assistance is matched. It's a 50% match. Um, with under CARES, I believe I mentioned, but if not, it's 100% federal. So uh, that's important because it's budget time for all of us, probably most of us. So the towns, you know, the, the CARES funding is going to really help you out because there won't be that 50% match required. And because in light of the situation and we have the CARES funding available, we're working through pushing that money out quicker. Traditionally, we pay it on an annual basis. Once we get the full annual report in from each operator, we calculate the payment. Right now, we're working to do that quicker, probably do it semi-annually, and there's a chance if we can pull it off with uh, staff capacity. It could be quarterly, but I don't want to promise that because it's kind of it's a big lift. But certainly, it's going to be quicker than annual, so that's what we're working on here with the CARES funding to help you guys out. Hey, thank you, Rob. Um, Travis Ewall from DPW. Harry, I don't really have anything to add. Okay, thank you. Are there any reports from other members? Um, MTA, Olu, you have anything you want to share? I can't talk. I know. No. Okay, how about uh, Lizzie Phillips? From, uh, would you like to share anything? Sandra J uh, Jobson from New York State DOT, anything further today? Yeah, I have nothing, but if anyone has anything for me, Anyone? You have DOT right here now. It's your opportunity. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, share a report with our uh, organization? Harry, I just wanted to say thank you to all the board members for their support. And also the first time in my career here that I've heard anyone describe Jacob as charming. <laughs> <laughs> I only speak the truth. <laughs> and I, this is Julie Richmond. Yes. I, I just want to clarify for the record, Jacob and Mayor. Um, I, you know, I didn't mean to imply that, you know, you're, we're putting an undue burden on the MPO, but in some respects, you know, you were pressuring the MPO and it is a difficult time financially with everything that's going on for everyone. And I do think a lot of this back and forth could have been avoided if perhaps the council had more information up front. I know you probably disagree with that, but I do support Middletown. There's a lot of focus on what's going on in Middletown. The West Central study is is focusing heavily on transit services in Middletown. We're, we're helping out with the transit, um, the transit hub project and helping out with the, you know, the development of the heritage trail in Middletown. So I, I just wanted to clarify, you know, that we're not, not in support of what's going on in, in, in the city. No, Julie, Julie, I appreciate that. But uh, by the facts, what I stated earlier on the record is uh, unfortunately, is, is very true. We submitted all the information. We've been asking for this for years. We submitted the information back in January 2nd with the questionnaire. So nothing in there has been hidden. Nothing has been rushed. We discussed it. I don't want to start again. So I respect what you, what, you know, I respect your position that you're supporting Middletown, but I completely disagree with you about us putting undue pressure, but thank God we are where we are. So I appreciate everybody's help. Thank you. You know, it's, uh, it's our, our country is only about three trillion dollars in debt. So I'm, I'm thinking that um, no matter who wins the election in the, in the next two weeks, uh, that there'll be infrastructure money available uh, after the election. Uh, and we'll go four trillion in debt. But I think there will be money available. Uh, it's a guess. It's a hope. 
but I believe that'll happen. And let's, uh, this is Mike Sweet, not, not to belabor this, but I, I agree with Julie that if the discussion of combining the pins going out to bid at one time for the whole project had been had in the planning committee meetings, rather than springing them on us, this would have gone differently. So again, I'm glad that we're supporting this and I have so much admiration for the changes that Middletown is making. But I, I do have to, to side with Julie on that with all due respect, Jacob. No, I understood Mike and I, I do have a lot of respect for you and I disagree with you as well to be, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Ashley would be there probably as, as a third party in there. She will uh, probably remember we only this phase one and phase two, we put a placeholder in there. We shoved all the money there in phase one because we wanted to construct everything under phase one. We left $100,000 in there just as a placeholder because we wanted just you never know what's going to happen in the future. Nobody knew about COVID. Nobody knew about anything else. So that's the only reason. But honestly, Mike, that was clear from, from day one. And Ash, I don't want to put Ashley on the spot. I'm saying that. But that's why we shifted all the money on, on, on phase one. And I'm sorry, we were not very clear for, for you or anybody else. You know, that's all I can say. But I appreciate very much the support from everyone. Any other comments from anybody, any member? I have, uh, uh, if I have one more staff update, Harry, if, if we're done discussing, oh. if, unless members have other comments they need to make. Go ahead. Okay, so um, the transit subcommittee, uh, we do have a transit subcommittee. It's part of OCTC. Uh, we haven't met in a while, but we will be reconvening the transit subcommittee for the first time since the pandemic. We're planning a virtual meeting in December. So lots of stuff queuing up for December. Um, the potential sort of agenda items are on the screen there. Um, they're up for discussion. Uh, we still haven't confirmed these, but we can talk about um, operational challenges due to COVID. Um, we can do the final presentation on the METS plan. Um, we can give an update on the transit website and the branding efforts and the purchase of the new bus shelters. Um, and of course, if anybody has any um, additional agenda items that they would like to have added to that, please let me know. But, um, but I do wanna extend the invitation um, to the virtual meeting to all the OCTC members. I know initially we had um, a spe specific list of those that would sit on the transit subcommittee, but it's not just open to the municipalities that operate transit services, it's particularly since we're doing a virtual meeting, I would encourage um, any members to participate. Um, and then I, I don't know if we have time or if we can, but um, I don't know if there are any potential dates in December that we can kind of get from the council right now. Well, you have one for December 8th, don't you? Well, uh, yeah, but this has to be a separate meeting. I want you to do a survey and find out. Okay, I can, I can do that. Yeah. Is, there, is there anything else from any of our members today? Okay, if not, I just wanna say thank you to Julie and, and Alan, Ashley and Lauren and Rob, you've done a great job there. We really appreciate it. I thank all of you for coming today to our meeting. It was an hour and a half, but uh, I think it was a very productive meeting. And uh, with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion, Jacob. Second. Second. Gary. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. All those in favor, yay, say yay. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for, so much for all of you for participating in today's uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Yep. Thank, thank you. you Harry. Thanks, Harry. Yep. Thank you, Harry.